Hi everyone, today we start off in North Dakota where a hitchhiker's life is narrowly saved by a complete stranger. What he encounters is absolutely horrifying. And then we hear from a listener in Chicago who witnesses disturbing activity in a downtown building in the middle of the night. What they see will make your heart beat out of your chest. Finally, we end up in the back roads of Louisiana, where a repulsive creature attacks to defend its territory. You don't want to miss these. So kick off your shoes, and let's get into the stories. People are scared of hitchhikers, but I'm telling you, Lilith, there are worse things out there. I was just trying to get out of Harvey, North Dakota, and move south for the winter. I'd been doing some work on a farm in North Dakota, but since it was late fall, most of that was ending for the year. So now I had to get all the way to Florida for the citrus season, but I had more time than money. So I just made a sign that said south and I set myself up on the highway. Interstates are better because you get truckers and sometimes they're bored enough to pick you up. Also, they're not usually as scared of strangers as your average Joe or Jane driving around in their own vehicle. I knew I could be waiting there a while, so I just sat down and leaned back. I propped the sign up against my feet. After a while, though, I smelled something awful wafting through the air around me. It would come and go, but when I could smell it, it was really strong. I looked around, but all I saw was the road, no roadkill, and a bunch of trees set back from the road a bit. I thought maybe it was my imagination. But then, I don't know if the wind shifted or what, but I smelled it again. Well, I'd been hitching long enough to know when it's time to move on down the road, so I did. The trees continued along this part of the highway, but I didn't pay much attention to them. At least, not yet anyway. By now, it was early afternoon. I had started out at 11 when I left the motel where I was staying in Harvey. I didn't want to start out too early since I had paid for the room, but also because the morning was cold. I lugged my pack and my sign down the road south for a little bit. I hadn't seen many cars pass by so far, and obviously none of them had stopped at this point to pick me up. Finally, I set my pack down again and sat back against it. I thought I must have moved far enough away from the smell. For a few minutes, everything was fine, and I had started to forget about it. But then it came back, stronger, like death. Rotting, stinking, foul death. I couldn't figure out how it had followed me. I looked around and saw the same things road, trees, grass, no rotting animals, nothing. This time I decided I would move on a bit further. I'd even walk until I came to the next town if I had to. As I walked, though, the smell did not go away, and I actually started to get nervous. How could a smell be following me? I was now really wishing a car would stop and pick me up. After an hour or so, I couldn't walk anymore. I sat down and I tried to relax, but all I could do was think about that death smell. As it started to get dark, I still didn't see anything. And I really, really wanted to get into a nice, warm car and get out of there. I didn't want to spend the night in the woods at all, let alone with whatever smelled that bad. I just kept looking toward the woods, and just as the sun was going down below the trees, I saw two red dots. They looked like red eyes staring at me from the shadows. I jumped up, grabbed my pack, and started walking again. I didn't think I had it in me, but I was walking fast. I waved my arms wildly every time a car passed, but I think they probably just thought I was crazy. None of them stopped. I watched the woods as I walked, but now I could not see anything. Finally, I stopped and sat down again. I had to. I was both physically and mentally exhausted. The smell was still there, but faint enough that I thought maybe I had been imagining it. Right then, I looked over to the woods again, and again, saw the red dots. But this time, I didn't just see the eyes. I watched as this creature started to step out of the shadows. And now I could see antlers above the eyes. Huge antlers, like on a big old buck. And then I saw the rotting flesh hanging off the face, which was basically just a skull. The body was bones with what looked like decomposing meat hanging off of it. It stood on its hind legs, which were like deer legs, but it was taller than a deer would be if it did that. This was huge, like nine or ten feet tall. And the grinning skull was the worst, though. 
because of those eyes that were looking at me like laser beams. I wanted to run, but I couldn't move. Basically, there wasn't anywhere to go. The thing had been following me all day. I was now sure of that. And now that it was out of the woods, the death smell was really strong. And it made me want to vomit, and I felt so sick that I wasn't sure I could move. I felt like giving up. That thing was going to come out of the woods completely, kill me and eat me. Whatever it was going to do, I don't know, but I was thinking the worst. So it kept walking toward me slowly, grinning and dropping bits of flesh like a zombie in a movie. It had that blank expression like one of them too, blank and evil at the same time. The highway lights suddenly then went out, like they just blinked off. And the moon was just a little sliver, and the nearest house was so far away I couldn't even see it. It was dark, real dark. I couldn't see the thing now except for its eyes, but I could smell it. And I realized that it wasn't making any sound. I couldn't even hear it walking, even though I knew it was still coming closer to me. I pulled myself up and started to stumble toward the nearest street light. I knew the thing was still following me, but I didn't know how close. And then I heard tires on the highway. I didn't care anymore. I knew this could be my last chance of getting away, and so I stumbled out onto the highway. I saw the headlights blinding me. I wanted to lie down, give up, but I reached my arms up, and the truck miraculously saw me and pulled off the side of the road and stopped. The driver then rolled down his window, but before he could say anything, I yelled, Something is chasing me. Please let me in, please. The driver sniffed the air for a second and said, The Wendigo, get in quick. And that was that. That's the story of how I feel my life was miraculously saved by a stranger. He knew all about the Wendigo. And in fact, he was the one who told me about your show, Lilith. He said I should tell you my story. I hope it fits in with your channel. Thanks. Lilith, do you ever feel like people just don't pay attention to what's going on around them? I do. I mean, how many people are there in Chicago, and it seems like I am the only one who notices this weird building? Okay, let me start from the beginning. I work at a bar in downtown Chicago. I get to work around 5 on the L, and I get done at about 1 in the morning. Then I take the train home. The bar is near this department store in an old building. I don't know when it was built, maybe the 20s or 30s. I go there sometimes if I need something, like a new shirt or whatever, just because it's close to work. In the basement, they have this clearance area or outlet or whatever. I like to go there because everything was cheaper. But one day, I needed new socks, so I went there, but the basement was closed. The escalator was blocked off and you couldn't see down there anymore. I didn't think much of it at the time, except I wondered what they were going to put down there. I bought a couple pairs of socks, and I asked the clerk. She said she didn't know, but acted kind of weird about it. And then I went on to work and didn't think about it again. A week or so later, though, I was on my way to the L to go home when I saw people moving some huge boxes into the bottom floor of the store. Now, that wouldn't have been that weird, except that it was 1 o'clock in the morning. They were using these hydraulic movers to bring things inside. I would have thought it was just store merchandise, but who moves in store merchandise in the middle of the night? Besides, they weren't bringing it in by the loading dock in back, and I don't know why. It felt like they were in a hurry. They were moving fast. I counted ten of those big boxes, like the size of a small car, except turned on its side. I tried to stay far enough away so they wouldn't see me watching, and I did feel like they were looking around to see if anybody was watching. Again, not normal if they were just moving merchandise. I knew there was a freight elevator that they could be using to bring those boxes down to the basement, and I had a feeling that that was what they were doing. Now, here's where it starts to get weird. I then think I heard a scream come out of the last box that they moved in. I know that you're thinking, like, how did I know it was coming from the box? But I just knew. It was like something told me. Besides, it didn't sound like anything I'd ever heard before, not like a person or a dog. It sort of sounded otherworldly. It's the only way I can explain it. After that, I made a point to walk by the building on my way to the train. In the afternoon when I came to work, I never noticed anything odd at all. But every night, I seemed to see or hear something different. 
The next day after the boxes, I heard loud grinding noises coming from that building, like a huge machine with gears kind of a sound, or maybe like a circular saw, but huge and screeching like it was cutting metal. How did nobody else notice this? I'm thinking maybe because it was around one in the morning. A few people around were either drunk or something, I guess, or maybe they just didn't want to hear it. I didn't hear that noise the night after. It was quiet, and I thought maybe it was just people bringing merchandise into the store after all. So a few days passed, and then every time I went by, I heard nothing. I still wondered what happened to those boxes, though, like what was in them. Sometimes in the afternoon, I'd walk by the back and see people unloading trucks like normal. That stuff came in smaller boxes, and they unloaded it on the loading dock. It was a totally different operation than what I had seen that one night. Every once in a while, I would ask somebody if they knew what was in the basement of the store now. Nobody ever knew. But one day, an employee from the store came in wearing the uniform. She sat at the bar and ordered a double rum and coke. I was nervous as I made it. I had to ask her. I had to know. As I gave her the drink, I thought she looked tired and stressed, maybe. Hey, I said casually. I used to shop in the basement of your store. What's down there now? She jumped a little, like I'd startled her. What do you mean? She said. I mean, what's down there now, in the basement of your store? I asked again. Nothing. I don't know what you're talking about, she said. I didn't believe her. Not for a second. She knew something. I could tell by her reaction to my question, but it was also obvious that she wasn't going to tell me what it was. That night after my shift, I walked by the store again. There are a few windows in that basement, the kind that are the high up ones, you know what I mean? Like, they're at the street level on the outside, but inside the basement they are high up near the ceiling. Well, every time I passed by them before, they had been dark, but this time, I saw this faint green light coming out of them. My first thought was that it was just like Ghostbusters, only it wasn't funny. It was actually scary because it pulsed, and it glowed like it was alive. And then there was this low scream that just kept going. No breaks or anything. I guess it was more like between a scream and a moan. I felt like whatever was making that noise had just given up. That was the worst part. So now, I think my next step will be the police. But I'm sort of scared about bringing any unwanted attention onto myself. So I'm really starting to think that over. What do you think I should do? I've never heard anyone report anything like this on your show before, so I'm not sure if it's even something you'd be willing to use. But after several years of kicking around the idea of going public with this story, I decided to give your show a shot. When I was a kid, I lived in rural Louisiana with my mom, dad, and two sisters. I was the middle kid. The middle kids tend to be the loners of the pack. I spent a lot of time out stomping around in the wilderness, but because of venomous snakes, alligators, and the like, my parents were constantly telling me that I needed to stick close to the house. Of course, I rarely listened to them, and I would find reason to sneak off as often as possible. Eventually, they gave up on trying to keep me corralled indoors and simply told me to be home by mealtimes to check in. In the summer of 92, I was 12. Being summer, I hadn't seen my friends in weeks because the only time I ever really went out was to go to school. So with school closed and me so far from town, it took some effort to get to hang out with them. My mom always knew this was hard for us kids, so she planned a few slumber parties throughout the summer so that we could get our friends out to the house to hang out and catch up during the long break. One night, she planned one of these get-togethers for me and my friends. My two best friends, Chris and Alex, came out to the house and mom made pizza. We played Super Nintendo until our thumbs were sore and then we decided to go outside and explore. Mom and Dad were always especially nervous about me taking friends out into the woods. I guess they figured that I was able to make my own way around and avoid trouble, but it was risky to take somebody else's kid out there and potentially have them hurt or bit or lost or any number of strange things that can occur out in the swamplands of Louisiana. I told my friends we would have to be quiet sneaking out so Mom wouldn't try to stop us. We were able to avoid her, and soon we were free to explore the outdoors. 
I took them down to the swamp and I showed them alligator tracks in the mud, which kind of scared them, so they wanted to head back to the house almost right away. I was regretting showing them the tracks, though, because being outside was my favorite thing, and I was kind of dreading heading back inside just to stare at the TV some more. There wasn't a lot else to do out where we lived, and I felt kind of like a bad host not having better entertainment options for my friends. In fact, I guess I kind of felt like they would treat me like a loser or not want to hang out anymore if I didn't do something to keep them entertained. So that's when I remembered there's this really cool old abandoned house out in the trees that always struck me as a likely haunted spot. It took a bit of convincing, but my friends did agree to come with me and check it out. So we started heading that way. It was a massive house, similar to the plantation style homes that used to stretch out across the state, but not as big as most of them. It had the wide columns on the front porch and the wraparound balcony up top though. And even before we got up to it, my friends were already impressed. Now there weren't any roads out there or anything anymore, so it was pretty well hidden, like a secret. As we got close to the house though, Alex suddenly stopped walking and started to dart back away, screaming, yelling something. Chris and I both asked what was going on, and Alex said, there's something moving up on the balcony. We stood where we were, and we all looked up. Sure enough, something was slithering along the balcony, occasionally showing itself through the gaps in the wood banister. It looked like a huge snake, at least two feet in diameter in the fattest part, and it had to have been about 20 feet long because we could see the tail end of it through the holes on the one side of the porch and the thicker part of it at the opposite corner although we had yet to see the head now i'm a naturally curious person so i wanted to see it better i started creeping up closer to it while the other two yelled at me not to they seemed almost angry with me that i was advancing on the thing but i refused to stop finally i found a large stick and i threw it as hard and as high as i could I did all right, because it cleared the banister and hit the thing, startling it. I know that, because next it started to slither up and over the banister, advancing down the side of the house, and only then did we get a glimpse of how truly horrifying it was. The thing had the long body of a snake, and easily 20 feet in length, like I said. But at the head of this thing, there were shoulders, two arms, and a head, and a face, It looked almost human, but it had yellow glowing eyes and it was flicking its tongue as it slithered towards us. It reached its hands out like it couldn't wait to grab one of us. Luckily, it wasn't a fast mover. We were able to actually get away from it pretty easily, and we ran straight back to my parents' house. We spent about an hour sitting on the floor of my bedroom, panicking that the thing would follow us home, but we never did see it again. After that, my friends weren't too interested in visiting me out in the swamps, and I can't say I blame them. I didn't do much exploring after that either. I did get pretty good at Nintendo, though, and today I'm a professional video gamer and award-winning esports champion. Silver linings, right? Let me know what you think about these stories in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Donovan Dread, who releases almost every single day. Also, if you like true crime, then check out Donovan Dread True Crime. There are new releases several times a week.